Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Burt Lancaster, Charles Bickford, and Nancy Gates in Brandon. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeling. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When we think of the days of the early West, branded is a term we usually associate with roundup time and the great cattle drives. But in our play tonight, branded serves to mark one man as another, giving him a forged birthmark which will allow him to step from a life of crime to one of wealth and position. As our stars of this absorbing drama from the Paramount Studios, Bert Hester, in one of the rugged roles for which he's famous, also that excellent character actor, Charles Bickford, and graciously stepping in for Mona Freeman, Nancy Gates. And of course, the word branded can also carry the public's stamp of approval. Surely there can be no higher compliment than to be branded a Lux girl. Because if you're a Lux girl, you can be sure you have the very best in complexion care. Your dependable daily Lux toilet soap facials. The curtain rises on Branded, starring Burt Lancaster as Choya, Charles Bickford as Mr. Lavery, and Nancy Gates as Ruth Lavery. <laughs> Arizona, 50 years ago. The lonely, desolate canyon country. A refuge for anyone anxious to keep ahead of the law. A man, for instance, like Choi. I'd figure to stay in the canyon for a week or so, then turn east again. New Mexico, maybe, or Kansas. Arizona was getting too hot for me. Too many sheriffs in too many towns were looking for me. It was kind of a shock to see a couple of men heading straight for my camp. But we're friends, sure, yeah. Uh, why don't you put that gun away? Yeah, we even left our guns below with the horses. That ought to prove that Just we're... don't turn around. Now, what'd you come here for? Well, mister, we've been riding your trail all the way from Montana. Why? We got a business proposition. A million-dollar deal. Get out. Even more, maybe. All I ask is a minute. Just one minute. The scheme is foolproof. You can take it easy the rest of your life while we'll own the biggest ranch in the Southwest. How about you uh, tell it? Turn around slow. My camp's behind the rocks. Start walking. His name was Leffingwell. He called the old man Tattoo. They talked for hours. It was the kind of a deal that you'd dream about. All I had to do was let the old man tattoo a mark on my shoulder. A birthmark. Yes, sir, gentlemen. I'm a real artist with a tattoo needle. When I'm sober. And this year is going to be my masterpiece. Yeah, well, this whole job is a masterpiece. You know, there's only been one problem, Joey. Getting you to tie on with us. Why, the first time I laid eyes on you was in Dodge City. And I knew right away you was the man for the job. How come? Well, you had the eyes, the right age, and the nerve. I seen you when you made your play in a saloon that night. Hey, take a look, Lev. All finished. Oh, perfect. Like it was born on his skin. That is high art, mister. Yeah, you can put your shirt on. Hey, Lev, we didn't say anything yet about the split. Three ways, all even. Tono. Down the middle, Leffingwell. Half for me. Nothing good. Shut up. You mean as much for you as me and him together? That's right. Uh, well, I reckon that figures. Not to me, it don't. You must never be greedy, Tattoo. It don't pay. Now, come on. We'll ride into town for supplies. Just sing out when you come back. <laughs> I'd sure hate to shoot a partner. <laughs> You'll hear me. I only got one life, Choya. I ain't no cat. <laughs> The 
Lettingwell came back the next afternoon. He was alone. Got everything we need for everything. Him? I, uh, I bought him out. Oh. No trouble at all, huh? No trouble at all. When do you figure to buy me out? Oh, our setup's no good without you, Troy. Right down the line. <laughs> Let's get moving. I waited a long time for this. Twenty-five years. A million dollars. And half of it's mine. <laughs> It was a long push, all the way through Texas down to the Rio Grande. But the day finally came when we could stop traveling. Just like I told you, Choi, one of the biggest ranches in the whole Southwest. Well, what's the matter? You ain't spoke ten words in the last three days. There's a sign on that fence. Read it. Bar Home M Ranch, Richard Lavery Owner. Keep out. This means you. That's right, partner. It means you. You lay over in town till you hear from me. No reason why we can't ride in together. Oh, I just walk up to the door, huh? Take off my shirt. Say, here I am. Look at my birthmark. Now, let's get this straight, Leffingwell. From here on, I'm doing the figuring. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's better that way. But just don't forget the details I told you, like, uh, like that rocking horse story. Let me hear from you real soon, huh? When there's something to tell you, you'll hear from me. Yeah, sure. Good luck, partner. I had it all worked out in my mind, just how to play it. Way in the distance, I saw a bunch of cow hens mending a fence. They looked kind of surprised when I rode up. Who's the foreman here? You overlooked the sign back there, mister. Maybe he just don't read. I'm a foreman. What do you want? I want a job. Yeah? What can you do? Smart folk, huh? Get off this ranch. I didn't come here for trouble, so don't start any. I want a job. Thought you boys were mending fence. Morning, Mr. Lavery. Howdy, Howdy, Miss Ruth. Who is he, Mr. Ransom? A new hand? Not by a long shot, Miss Ruth. We had a little misunderstanding. If you're Lavery, I... I am. Well, I'm looking for a job. Ransom does all our hiring. You were saying you needed some new hands, Mr. Ransom. Why not take him on and show him who's foreman around here? That new colt ready, Ransom? Ready as he'll ever be. He's real wicked, boss. Needs strong riding and court handling. Well, I'm his man. I'll take him on tomorrow. All right, Ruth. Let him get back to work. You. What's your name? They call me Choya. You want that job or not? I said I did, didn't I? All right, you're hired. Now get on them fence posts. <laughs> So far, so good. That night I saw the girl walk out on the porch of the ranch house. I knew I hadn't any right over there, and that's why I purposely walked over. What are you doing here? Well, I... I wanted to thank you, man, for getting me the job today. I had nothing to do with it. Mr. Ransom does the hiring. I know. Thanks anyway. You kind of like yourself, don't you? Well, it's the only affection I can depend on. Well, you can't expect folks to like someone who behaves like a one-man stampede. What's your name? Choya. Isn't that Spanish for cactus? Why do they call you that? Ever try to pick one? Now what's your real name? I wouldn't know. I... Not your father in there? Why? Well, I guess this meeting's over. Oh, Dad doesn't mind. He's just talking to Mother. Tell me, is, uh... Is that all the family? That's all now. Now? Well, I, I had a brother, but I never saw him. Kidnapped by him. We never found a trace of him. Dad still offers the reward, but it doesn't mean anything, really. Dad and I realize he must be dead, but not Mother. Her whole world centers on the hope that Richard's alive. That you out there, Ruth? Coming, Dad. Mother will be going up pretty soon. You'd better... You're away from the bunkhouse, mister. I didn't know there was a dividing line. Then keep it in mind. Sure, Mr. Lavery. I'm a cowhand. The laborers don't mix with dirty cowhands. Oh, Dad didn't mean it that way at all. It's as plain as those signs out there. Keep out. This means you. Dad, you... You were wrong. You think so? All right, I'll square it with him tomorrow. But he's sure honorary. It seems to me you could both do with some breaking. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, everything was moving along just the way I wanted. The next day, I had another trick to pull. I'd heard Leavery tell Ransom he wanted to ride that wild colt. I figured I'd beat him through. Get off that colt, Joya. I've broke colts before now. That's it. Get off him. Well, man, Lavery's age is liable to get hurt. There's only one man around here rides the mean ones. That's the boss, see? That's his orders. Well, why don't you say so? Wouldn't have mattered much if I had, would it? <laughs> I guess not. Here he comes, Ransom. The boss. Get off that colt. Yeah, sure, Mr. Lavery. I'll get off this ranch. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go when I'm ready. Give him a week's pay, Ransom, and throw him out of here. It'll be a pleasure. Not until I pay you off, Lavery. You're just fight crazy, aren't you? Come on, boys, let's get him. Why don't you call the rest of your men, Lavery? Hold it. Hold his arms. Ransom, his shirt. They're at the shoulder where it's torn. Boss, let go. Take it easy. Where are you from? Why? Talk civil. I said, where are you from? Places. We have... Up, get. Let him go, boys. Mr. Lavery. I said, let him go. Maybe now you'll tell me. I got no folks. Nobody owns me. That birthmark on your shoulder. It's not your brand, is it? Ransom, look again. Say, what's the matter? You all crazy? It's the same birthmark, boss. I never forgot it. Now, the sooner I clear out of here... Listen to me. You don't understand. I've got to know something about you. Why? Because you might be my son. Oh, and you might be loco. My son was taken from this ranch when he was five years old. We've never stopped looking. We had only one thing to go on, a mark. A birthmark, like yours. I don't know what this adds up to, mister, but I've never been in Texas before in my life. Get cleaned up. Then come up to the house. I want my wife to see you. And if I don't? You can come of your own free will or ransom and the boys will bring you. I'll be there in a few minutes. Thank you. Now, look. My wife's inside there with Ruth. I want you to try to understand what she's been through. I've told her this is probably a mistake, but she's excited, naturally. And you won't mind her asking you questions, will you? No, but... Well, I think you're, think you're way wrong. All right, I'm wrong. He's here, Mary. Would you mind showing that birthmark to my wife? Later, Richard. Later. Just... Just let me look at him. I've been trying to tell your husband, ma'am. He's... He's made a big mistake. Do you... Do you remember me at all? Oh, no, of course you couldn't. It's been so very long. Is there anything familiar about us to you? Ruth, how could there be? Richard was so little. Just a baby. What about this house? The ranch? Richard was barely five. He couldn't remember. I can remember before that. I've heard your baby stories from Mother and me so often, you'd think it's your own memory. But there wasn't anyone to tell stories to Richard. But surely he must remember something. Well, the, the only thing I can remember are, well, kid dreams, but they, they never made any sense. What were they? Please, please. Oh, nothing about here or, or Texas. Just crazy things like, well, like a, like a rocking horse. What about a rocking horse? Oh, nothing. It doesn't make any sense. A rocking horse with three legs. Uh, one in front was always missing. That was your toy. Your favorite toy. I have... I still have it. <laughs> Sit down, son. Please. We want to talk to you. It was that simple. I let him drag out a couple of more details. Things Leffingwell had told me. Just enough to make it sound real good. It was quite a performance. The old lady never stopped crying. Even Lavery's eyes were full of tears. And Ruth... Well, she, she just sat there, staring at me. The next day, I went riding with her. Ruth wanted to show me the ranch. But there's the south section. That's our best grazing land. It runs as far as the mountains. They sure look like good stock. Now, if we go down this trail, we can... Well? All I, I really want to tell you is... I'm very happy. Are you? As soon as we spoke that night, I... I felt something about you. Oh, it's hard to explain, but... But afterwards, I, I kept thinking about you. Of course, I couldn't have known then, but... Well, I just felt close to you. 
But you're still not sure of me. I am now. You see, another shock in Mother's life. She's not me. She might have been more than she could take. I should have known Mother's instinct about her own son couldn't have been wrong. It could be she's been wanting this to happen so bad she... She just bought me on sight. Yes, that could be. Oh, but there's no ifs about you. You're Richard Lavery, my brother. Oh, Dick, I haven't cried till now. I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't help Look, uh, if we're going to get back before supper, we better ride. <laughs> the next time I get sentimental, you, you just tell me to shut up. Dick, what was it like? All those years, what you did, where you went? You wouldn't like it. It sounds exciting. Like maybe you had to use those guns. I've used them. Well, you can put them away now. You'll never have to wear them around here. And don't worry about what's past. We're going to love you so much you'll forget there ever was anything else but us and the ranch. Shut up. I'm sorry, but... Well, you asked me to say that if you ever got sentimental. Come on. Let's give these horses a little exercise. Yeah, come on. Let's ride. It went like that for three weeks. Lavery, his wife, and Ruth, standing on their heads, trying to please me, trying to make me like them. Even when I was alone, I felt they were watching me, smiling at me. But being alone wasn't easy. Lavery had started rounding up his cattle. Well, Dick, we'll be driving $180,000 worth of prime beef to El Paso. Well, aren't you impressed? Yes, sir. I guess I am. A man's viewpoint sure changes. I used to want success right enough, but nothing like the way I do now. It's a great feeling to know your own flesh and blood son is around to take over what you sweat to build. Let's get over to the chuck wagon. Look, there's... There's something I want to tell you. When I came here, I... Sawyer! Well, I'll be gone. Who was that? I'm not sure. Sawyer! Oh, yeah, he's, uh... He's an old friend of mine. A man named Leffingwell. Well, if he's a friend of yours, he's welcome here. You'll sure have something to tell him, won't you, son? Yes, sir. I'll have a lot to tell him. Sure, yeah. Well, how long have you been working here? I, uh, I just stopped by looking for a job. Well, don't I even get a handshake? You kind of took Dick unexpected, mister. Dick? Dick who? Richard Lavery, Jr., my son. Him? Choyer? Well, go on, Dick. Tell him. He's right. Why, you... You mean all those years you said you had no folks you had this place to come to? Dick will tell you all about it. Go on, son. Take your friend up the house. I'll join you later. Yes, sir. Thank you. So this is your room, huh? Now, I told you you'd be living like a king in a palace. And I told you to wait in town. Sure, wait. I got calluses from waiting. Well, as soon as you're in the saddle, we'll dump this ranch on the open market. We'll be up to our ears in cash. Why don't you stop dreaming? You saw Lavery. He'll outlive the both of us. You getting soft in the head? He ain't going to outlive a forty-five slug, is he? Mm, get this straight. Nobody's gunning him. No? Well, I ain't young enough just to sit around and wait for him to have a natural. You won't have to wait. We're getting out. No. No, you can't do it. This thing is mine. You ain't got the right to go and get religion now. If I ain't got this deal, I ain't got nothing. We'll get ours. Now listen. I'm heading the cattle drive to El Paso. There's a hundred and eighty thousand in it. Money you ever Yeah, a million. It's the cattle money or none at all. Uh, I guess that's that. Can you sign me on for the drive? Yeah. I've starved and gone to prison. Yeah, and I've killed. And all the while I was counting on the money I was going to make out of this. I figured I'd go back to New Orleans in style. I guess I'm just too old to argue. Just don't change your mind. Come on, I'll show you around the ranch. <laughs> We started the cattle drive a week later. Lavery stayed on the ranch. After all, his own son would be in charge. Yeah, Lavery stayed. But Ruth insisted on coming along. I kept away from her as much as I could. Well, we'll reach the river tonight, Dick. 
We're making good time today. Not good enough, Ransom. We've got to do better tomorrow. No sense in running their weight off before they're sold. Right out where you belong, Ransom. I'll handle this drive. Yeah, I guess you will. Wait a minute. Anything wrong? No. No, I just thought I'd ride with you for a while. Dick, there is something wrong. It's you. You've been jumpy and and irritable ever since we started. You've been avoiding me. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm just anxious about the drive. Just like Dad. Ready to buck and rear at the flick of a whip. I guess you heard me blowing off at Ransom just now, huh? He means well, Dick. And there's nothing he wouldn't do for us. I know. I'll make it up to him later. I can't wait till we get to Paso. There's so many people I want you to meet. Oh, don't look so bored. Where do you see some of the girls I'm going to... Well? Oh, I, I never asked you. Maybe you have a girl somewhere. Yeah, maybe I... Oh, she... Oh, you. You can be so aggravating at times. There isn't any girl. Well, that's wonderful, then. Wait till I introduce you to Judy Medbury. She's the prettiest girl in passing. Look, let's worry about my girl after we get there, hmm? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Your friend, Mr. Leffingwell. What about him? Nothing. He just said if I saw you and you weren't too busy, he wanted to talk to you. Oh. Where is he? Up ahead. Riding point. Thanks. <laughs> Nothing too important, Joey. Only, uh, I just been doing some thinking. That 90,000 I'm going to get. What about it? Well, someday it may all be gone. Then we can come back, hmm? The family will always forgive a little thieving and an only son. We're never coming back. I figure it all depends on the finances. That, uh, that girl, Joy. Pretty, hmm? Too bad she's your sister. Why don't you find yourself a rat hole? Ah, I was only joking. But uh, maybe you called me right. Maybe rat fits me proper. So don't push me too far, partner. Don't back me up against no wall. You're the one who's pushing hard? You ain't the kind that'll draw first or shoot a man in the back. Meaning what? I told you once, this was my deal. I put my life in it. So it's gonna pan out. Just like I hoped it would. In a few moments, we'll be back with Act Two of Branded. Now, Mr. William Keeley, our producer. Act Two of Branded, starring Burt Lancaster as Choya, Charles Bickford as Mr. Lavery, and Nancy Gates as Ruth Lavery. I timed the drive so we'd reach El Paso early in the morning. By nightfall, I wanted to be as far away as a horse could take me. As we were leaving the cattle yard, I told Ransom I wanted to see him. Where's my sister, Ransom? In the office, talking to the cattle people. Pick her up. See that she gets to the hotel. I thought you were going with her. I'll meet her there. They sent the tally over to the bank. I'll go there first to make sure about the money. Well, might as well keep walking, then. What are you doing, riding herd on me? I don't need anybody to hold my hand. I don't reckon you do. All I aim to do is pick up my horse. I got Leffingwell and went over to the bank. I left him outside. I told the cashier I wanted to see the president. You're young Lavery. Sit down, son. Thank you. I was just wondering if you had our money ready. Yeah, got it right here. Ransom brought the tally over about an hour ago. Yo, come in, Dawson. Come in. Here's somebody been waiting a long time to meet you. This is Charlie Dawson, Texas Rangers. Well, looks like I finally caught up with you, Lavery. What? Yeah, I've been looking for you for more than 20 years. You sure caused us plenty of trouble when you was took. Why, I chased one lead all the way to New Orleans. New Orleans, huh? Yeah, nothing come of it, though. Well, it's sure good to see you. Anything you want, you just come on over to the jail. Thanks. Now, about your money, it comes to $182,000. Don't bother to count it. Just give me a receipt. And deposit it to my father's account. I thought you wanted the cash. 
I changed my mind. You're stolen, Choi. I want my money. I said we'd come back to the hotel and talk it over. All right. We're here. Now give me my share and you can talk all you want. I didn't take the money. You're lying. Am I? Here's the bank receipt. Deposited to the account of Richard Lavery Sr. You'll be sorry for this, Choi. Right down to your dying day. So... The Rangers chased you clear down to New Orleans, huh? What are you talking about? We made a deal. You're going to see it through. Lavery's son. What did you do with him? Go ahead. Go ahead. Pull a gun on me. My time will come. Sure, your time will come. You'd kill me just like you killed Tattoo. Only that won't get you a dime, will it? Ah, looks like there ain't nothing to talk over then. Isn't there? There are six bullets in this gun. I'm taking five of them out. Now I'll spin the cylinder. I'm giving you odds, Leffingwell. Five to one. Now, what did you do with the Lavery kid? Yeah, you won't pull that trigger. You just ain't the murdering kind. The boy, where is he? Hey, he died on me before I could collect a reward. I, I swear it on my mother's grave. He died across the border. You're lying. No, Troy, wait. He, he, he was took from me. You never tried to get him back? You just let it ride? Never tried to collect the reward? What are you giving me? There are three more chambers. Two of them are empty. Uh, he, he was took by Matteo Rubris. The old bandit? Yeah, yeah, Rubris. You picked that name because you know that Rubris is dead. No, 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 he ain't. He, he's in Mexico. He's holed up in the mountains the other side of Hermosa. He, he found gold. Yes, honest, Choi, honest. But it's worth a man's life to go near there. What about the Lavery boy? Well, he, he's been told that he's that he's Tonio Rubris, his son. He, the old man's so crazy about him, he, he'd kill anybody that tells him any different. So, you're finally telling the truth. Yeah. Twenty-five years. Best hand a man ever held. And it blows away like a... Look now. Get a thousand miles from Texas. If I ever hear that you're around the Lavery's, I'll kill you. See you, Ruth. Well, did you take care of the money? I took care of everything. Thank goodness. Now hurry up and get dressed. We're going over to call on the Medberries. Wait. I'm not going with you, Ruth. Dick. Here's the receipt from the bank. I'm leaving. But first I have to tell you something. I know. Something that's been bothering you all through the drive. But there's nothing you can tell me that could matter. I'm not a child, Dick. And if I can help you, well, what's a sister for? I wish I had some place to crawl in and hide. Ruth, I'm not your brother. I'm a four-flushing thief. No. No, that isn't so. That birthmark, it was tattooed on my shoulder. That story about the rocking horse. That was just one of those things I learned from the man who kidnapped your brother. No, no. I was going to hit it big, take it easy for the rest of my life. But nobody told me that I'd meet somebody like you. Wait. Wait, don't go. Please. Please. I got out of town. I had to in my Mexico. Somewhere in the mountains near Hermosa was a man that I'd have to find. Mateo Rubris. And all the while I thought of Ruth. And how she'd feel when she faced her folks again. Mother's gone to bed, Ruth. Now tell me, what really happened in El Paso? Dad, I I told you. Dick had some business to take care of. He'll be coming back later. He said he'd write. I don't believe that. I've got to know Ruth. What happened to your brother? He's not my brother. He came here to rob us. That birthmark was tattooed on his shoulder. You're talking crazy. It's true. He told me so himself. Oh, Dad, what'll we do? I should have used a gun on him that first day he came here. Killing him's hardly enough now, but it's all I can do. And how would that help Mother? It's Mother we have to think about. I'll find him. I'll find him and drag him back. He's going through with his four flushing all the way. He'll be Richard Lavery, Jr. as long as your mother's alive. Ransom, get a couple of horses. We're leaving for El Paso. <laughs> The 
There was no way of my knowing then that, that labor had started on my trail. Besides, by now I'd reached the mountains back of Hermosa. And as I'd hoped, Ruby's men found me and brought me to him. Americano, eh? Did you lose your way in the mountains, maybe? I came here looking for you, Rubies. Oh, that was a big mistake. <laughs> they used to come looking for me all the time. Not so many went back, senor. I'm in trouble with the law back in Texas. I ran out of hiding places. I thought maybe you... Mateo Rubies is no innkeeper. Get out. I didn't know that you were friends with the law. Friends with the law. Before the government forced me to retire, I used the Rio Grande like a ferry boat. That's why I thought you'd hide me out. Or kill you. Yeah. I took a chance. Yeah. <laughs> what do they call you? Choya. Choya. El Choya. It is a name I have not heard. Small thing with a gun, huh? Big enough, the rangers want to do a little hanging. Me? They wish to hang a thousand times. Yeah, you young ones. In the old days, when I rode with Juarez, I... Hi, you work late at the mine, Tonio. Hey, hey, come here. Si, si. This one is called Choya. My son. Oh, welcome, senor. He has come to me because they have a piece of rope for him in Texas. Uh -huh. uh, Miguel, he's waiting to see you. Uh, see, I know. Uh, you stay here, Tonio. With this uh, desperado, this bad one from Texas. Si. You, uh... You ever been in Texas, Tony? Oh, many times. I've used the Rio Grande like a ferry boat. Yes, I know. I've heard that already. <laughs> Tony, I may not have much time. I came here only to find you. Me? Why? I'm going to show you a brand. Maybe you know it. Come here. Take a look. That, ma that mark on your shoulder. But that's on my shoulder, too. Yes, but yours is real. This is tattoos. Sit down, Tony. I want to tell you something about this. It's so important, Miguel, this business of yours. The Americano, Effie. Someone is following me. Huh? Someone you know. Leffingwell. Leffingwell. Bring him in. See. Si. Mateo. Long ago I told you never to come to these mountains again. Yeah, I'm not crazy, Mateo. I got good reasons for coming. It's about Tonio. Miguel, leave us alone. I turned down a hundred thousand dollars to do this for you. What about Tonio? Fifty thousand is all I'm asking from you, Mateo. Old friends. <laughs> Come tell Tonio and take him back. Take him back? Back where? Family in Texas. He's their son. Well, don't you have nothing to say? Stay here. I will be back. <laughs> Everything I told you is true. He's not your father. Your real mother and father are waiting for you in Texas. Not my father? But how could he have done a thing? Take him! Diaz! Take him away! Wait, wait. He said that you're not my father. You can't deny it, Rubris. You, I will have flayed a little at a time and let the dogs eat your hide. Are you? Are you my father? Tell him, Rubris. You know he's not your son. Tonio. Tonio. I do not know what he has told you, but there has been no one in the world more to me since the day you were abandoned in my village. In all these years you have lied to no. me. No. No, I do not lie. Tonya, what is blood? When you were little and you cried in the night, I put my hands on you, and the love of God flowed into your body. You would go to sleep holding this hand. And when I tried to pull away, you... Still held it, even in your sleep. <laughs> made me very happy. That is how I made you my son. The son of Mateo Rubris. But you... You should have told me, Jefecito. Oh, Mother of God, make him understand. Tonio, listen to me. It, it was a miracle from heaven that I gained you as a son. You have lived in my heart ever since. You... You are my father. Tonio. Stay here. I have words now with El Choya. No, no, no. I ask you to let him go. No, my will. But all the stuff things are as they were. He will talk, Tonio. There will be trouble. And since when have we run away from trouble, Jefecito? 
Sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come, uh, we are both hungry, eh? First we eat, and then I will think on it some more. Ruber's men had taken me to a barn. They tied me to a post. Late that night, the door opened. Estonio, I'm going to let you go. What about Ruber's? He changed his mind about killing me? I don't think so. Look, senor, I love my father, but I'm disobeying his orders. Your father's in Texas, Lavery. Do not use that name to me. I'm Rubris. All right. Search yourself. Outside is a horse. Right fast to the pass. We have two sentries there. Here, take my gun. Thanks. I hope you will not have to use it. You're not coming with me? No. My father is Mateo Rubris. Your father's Richard Lavery. You've got a mother and a sister. You can't change it. It's a crazy thing to be born twice in one lifetime, senor. Get on your horse. Where are I not ahead again? I'm taking you back, Tonio. Senor, you're a man without honor and I'm a fool. But you will have to shoot me before it. I brought the butt of the gun down on his head. I had no choice. Tied Tonio to another horse and started for the pass. There were a few shots from the sentries, but they lost us in the darkness. It wasn't until I stopped to rest the horses that I saw that Tonio had been hit. You, you will never leave this hill, senor. By now, my father will know what has happened. Your arm. Here. Here. That's... What's the nearest place we can stop? There is nowhere that you can stop. Every minute, these mountains will be searching for you. Tell me, senor, is the money that you hope to collect for me enough to pay for your life? We're moving. I'm sorry that you got hurt, Tonio, but don't try to stall me. Ah, you will do nothing to me. That I'm not worth a peso to you. You want to be hogtied? I will come. But it's a long way to the Rio Grande, senor. You'll never make it. At daylight, we were still in the mountains. And far off, through the mists, I saw spirals of smoke in every direction. A signal, senor. Soon they cover every trail. Uh, how's your arm? It pains me greatly, but I am not the one who's going to die. Yes, you've just about got me convinced. All right, I'll try to make it out of here alone. Here, take the gun. When you hear them, fire a couple of shots. They'll find you. Senor... I do not understand you at all. It is not money that you want, is it? No. What made you come into our mountains, sir? Because I had all the angles figured. All except one. Your sister. Ruth. You do not answer my questions, sir. Well, maybe I came here because I was tired. Maybe my luck's running out. I don't know. Maybe I came here because for just once in my life, I wondered what it would be like to do something decent. And now you will try to go back and see them. Oh, no. If I get out of this, I'm going to skip the whole state of Texas. But listen, you get yourself across the border sometime. You meet those people. Meet them and, well, then you'll know why I came here. You will have to go back to the library's choice. Not a chance. I cannot go by myself. Now, come on. Help me up on the horse again. Well, you, you that make even try. Give I will make it. I wish to see for myself this, this wonderful family. So we started out once more. And behind us, closing in with every mile, were Rubri's and his men. And Leffingwell. Alto! We'll stop here. Why? Why? For what? We sit here and they're making time for the Rio. I have men in these canyons. They will know which trail they took. Tonio knows these trails, too. He'll know where to hide, where to throw us off. Tonio will show him nothing. Uh, you still don't believe it, huh? You just can't believe that Tonio would help him. What more proof do you want? All these years, they cannot be destroyed by a few words from a stranger. Stranger, huh? They're partners by now. It's true, Mateo. Who but Tonio let him escape? Shut up. You think I do not know? But it's not easy to recognize a traitor among your own. Then we return home? No. That is not the way I punish traitors. 
Antonio is no different from the others. Yeah, I used to think there was nothing. I wanted more than money. Stacks and stacks of money. But now, most of all, I want to watch Choya die. I want to do the killing. But the river, Avery. Once they get across the Rio Grande... Let them cross. I will follow until I find them. on Rebranded, starring Burt Lancaster as Choya, Charles Bickford as Mr. Lavery, and Nancy Gates as Ruth Lavery. We pushed ahead all that day and night without rest of food. By now, Tonio was too weak to stay in the saddle. He begged me to tie him on, to keep going. In the morning, we reached the Rio Grande. Somehow, we, we got across. I got Tony off his horse. But this was it. We could go no further. Far off, I... I thought I saw two men. I tried to call to them, but... the ground gave way and swallowed me up. Well, we'll be back at the ranch by sundown, Mr. Lavery. You figured out yet what we're going to say to Mrs. Lavery? I don't know what to say to her, Ransom. My guess is Choi crossed the Rio three or four days ago. Deep in Mexico by now. How can I tell her that? How can I tell her the truth? And yet if I don't, every time anybody rides up to the ranch, she'll be waiting for her son to come through the door. I don't know what to say or what to do. Well, maybe you could tell her we saw him in Paso. He's staying there on ranch business. Or maybe he didn't cross the river. We could push on toward Arizona and... Wait a minute. There's a stray horse down there, coming up from the river. Yeah. Carrying a Mexican saddle. He's fresh out of the Rio. Come on, Ransom. Let's ride down and have a look. Lavery and Ransom got us back to the ranch. Tonio was still unconscious. I guess I should have told Lavery all about him. But I was too beat up to do much talking. It could all... Yes. Don't worry, Lavery. I played it just the way you told me. I told her I'd... I'd explain everything in the morning. What about my friend? I've been with the doctor. He just left. He says he'll be all right. He gave him something to keep him quiet. I could use a little rest myself. If you can wait till morning, too, I'll... I'll tell what you about all about room? it. You'd better get up there yourself. If, uh... If Ruth should... Just leave Ruth out of this. Yeah, sure. I'll tell you the whole story tomorrow, Avery. You've got nothing to tell me, but as long as my wife's alive... And after I've said my piece, you can do whatever you want with me. Right now, if it's all the same with you, I'll get some sleep. But it wasn't easy to go to sleep. I had too much to think about. But just as I seemed to be dropping off... I heard someone at a window. There was no mistaking him in the moonlight. Mateo Rubris. Get up, Troya. Now walk to the door. Lock the door. <laughs> the two of you came out of Mexico together, and now it is right that you die together. He didn't come out with me. I brought him out, Rubris. At the end of a gun. No longer is my heart bigger than my head. Antonio, get up. Get up, traitor. Take it easy, Rubies. One of your men shot him the night we got away. Then he will not be awake to see death. But you are awake. If you kill him, Rubies, you'll be sorry the rest of your life. You're the top of his world. Once, maybe, but no more. That's the truth. Choya. Choya, it's Ruth. Please let me talk to you. Please let me come in. Not now. Is anything... Did you talk to your friend? Yes, he, uh, he's awake. Send her away. 
Ruth, you, uh, you better get downstairs. Now. If that's what you want. That's what I want. What is the taste in your mouth, Joya? Like salt. And your neck is stiff. I can still nod to a friend. You, I can kill happily. I can look straight into your eyes and pull the trigger. And I will sleep at night even better than if I... You... Ruby's meant it. Every word. I kicked over a chair as he came toward me. I knocked the gun out of his hand. But for an old man, this Rubri's was plenty tough. Chikoya! Dad! Dad, come up! Hurry! Hurry! All right, Rubri's. Get up. Pick up the chair. Now sit down. Sit down! Now you're going to listen to me. This is the reason Tonya went with me. This... The end of a gun. And that's the reason you're going to sit there and listen to me. You will gain nothing. I did not come alone. Ten of my men surround the bunkhouse. Twenty more of my men are around this house. Oh, yeah. What's going on in there? Open the door, Julia. Hold it, Lavery. Just stay where you are, do you hear me? Open this door or I'll... Everything will be all right if you do as I say. Don't let anyone leave the house, do you understand? I guess I'll have to understand. My wife's coming up. As for you, Rubies. A 45 slug would untwist that mind of yours, I'd let you have it in a second. But Tony would never forgive me that. Not the way he feels about you. Your gun will not help me believe your lies. No. No, I suppose I'm going to have to kill you. Kill you like a loco horse. And then your men can come in here and finish off the rest. Kill the best part of your life. Took you from nothing. Made him my son. And he loves you for it. He kept stop pussy for... Let me take the way through the only reason he changed his mind was to help me square myself with his family. All these years, I have been his family. He has been mine. There was nothing else. And now you're going to blow him out like a light. You never stop to figure that his father and mother, that they have a right to some of what you've had for all these years that you talk about. They've had nothing since Leffingwell stole him out of this room. To me, Tonya was abandoned. I did not know he was stolen. Well, you know it now. Twenty-five good years. And you're going to wipe them out with your own hand. No. He has destroyed those years. All the happy days. Tonio has forgotten. He despises me, betrays me, leaves me. If you don't believe he has nothing but love for you... If you don't believe that when he's well, he'll be riding right over to see you. If you don't know him better than that, then... Oh, what's the use? Here. Hey, go on, take your gun. You or your men, what's the difference? Go ahead and shoot him while he's still asleep. You give me back my gun. You would have me leave him here to forget Mexico, to forget me? Forget you? I tell you that when he's well, he'll be making the Rio Grande like a ferry boat, running between you and these people here, these laveries. If only it could be so. It is so. Momento. Miguel, get the men together. Right back to the trail. Wait for me there. Antonio. Antonio. It is me, your father. He can't hear you. But don't worry. It's the medicine the doctor gave him. He'll get well. Antonio. Life is not by the blood, but by the heart. Yes, Antonio? You can come in now, Lavery. You and your wife. And... Ruth? We heard, Choya. We heard it. But, lady, real father. Tonio, he's too sick to ride along with me, senor. And in sickness, it is better that he be with you and his mother, his sister. Uh, maybe someday I can come back and see him and he to see me. Any time. Thank you, senor. <laughs> this Choya, he's more like me than myself. <laughs> he gives me the gun, he invites me to do murder, but <laughs> first he removes the bullets. <laughs> hey, where does he go? Choya. Choya? Uh, senor. Senor, before I leave, with my men is one named Leffingwell. Your rangers with a big reputation. You tell your rangers, I give them a present. They can pick up Leffingwell on your side of the river. He's not fit for me to kill. (laughs) 
Troy, you What do you think you're doing? It's a long walk into town. We can ride double. Come on, get up. I could use a horse, but not with you on it. I'm going with you, Choya. It might be fun to be out where things happen. You're not leaving the ranch. I am if you are. Now listen. Don't argue with me, Choya. I'm pretty tough. Yeah. Awful tough. Hello, I stop, Choya. You sing in the moonlight. It's very pleasant, huh? <laughs> What'd you slap the horse for? So he'd go back to the corral. It's still a long walk to town. It's much shorter back to the house. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Suppose we find out. Our stars will return in just a minute. Walking, walking, waiting, waiting. Dancing, dancing, dating, dating. Everywhere a lady goes, it's hard on stockings, hard on hose. Sitting, sitting, striding, striding, running, running, driving, driving. Everywhere a lady goes, it's hard on heels, hard on toes. One, two, one, two. Stretch, strain, stretch, strain. Everywhere a lady goes, it's hard on stockings, hard on hose. Scientific strain tests show that stockings washed the gentle Lux way last twice as long. That's why 90% of the manufacturers of nylons recommend Lux Care. So start the Lux Flakes habit this very night. Remember, Lux Flakes gives you double the stocking wear. It's like getting an extra pair with every pair you buy. Extra pair. Lux Care. Double wear. Lux Care. Lux. 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 And now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And we invite them forward for a special curtain call. Bert Lancaster, Charles Bickford, and Nancy Gates. <laughs> Bert, our only regret is that we couldn't see some of your acrobatic tricks during the show. Well, as a matter of fact, Bill, I just happen to have a few parallel bars with me. <laughs> no, thanks. Charles and I don't want you showing us up. That's right. My greatest exercise comes from lifting a strip. <laughs> but maybe Nancy would like to see a few acrobatics. You know, I think Nancy performed quite a trick when she stepped into tonight's play at the last moment. Well, I'm very sorry that Mona Freeman was suddenly taken ill, but I did enjoy doing the show. You don't suppose making a picture with those crazy comedians, Martin and Jerry, had to do with Mona Hill? Oh, Mona, that old flu bug. Is she and Martin and Lewis' latest picture for Paramount, Sailor Beware? No, Sailor Beware is already playing all over the country now. This will be their next one. And I understand that on the set, it's uh, everyone beware. They tell me the boys never stop clowning when they're making a picture. You're so right, Bert. Then on weekends, they make home movies. I wish they'd cast me in one of their productions. Well, if they ever need a Lux girl, I'll recommend you. Well, that would be perfect casting, Bill, because Lux toilet soap is my favorite complexion care. Before we go, Bill, we'd like to hear about next week's play. Next week, we'll have a modern romance. It's the 20th Century Fox screen success, Take Care of My Little Girl. And as the stars of this current drama of college and sorority life and playing their original roles, we'll have Gene Crane and Dale Robertson. That was a hit picture, Bill. Good night. Good night. It was a great show. Good night. One of Hollywood's most glamorous stars, Arlene Dahl, a beautiful redhead with a radiant, creamy, smooth complexion, gives you one of her most precious beauty secrets. She says, It's wonderful the way my Lux Soap facials give skin quick, new loveliness. Why don't you take the advice of glamorous screen stars like Arlene Dahl? Lux Soap's creamy, active lather does so much for the skin. These easy beauty facials are a simple complexion care that works. Just smooth Lux Soap's rich, active lather well into your skin. Active lather does the trick. It cleanses gently but thoroughly. Then rinse with warm water and splash with cold. Right away, skin feels softer, smoother, looks lovelier. So get fragrant white Lux toilet soap tomorrow and see what Hollywood's own beauty soap can do for you. You'll find life's lovely when you're Lux lovely. That's why nine out of ten screen stars are Lux girls. Brother, here's a toilet soap. Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening. 
when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gene Crane and Dale Robertson in Take Care of My Little Girl. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs>